Hello and thank you for joining us. Well, it's Tuesday and it's another edition of Business Nigeria. Well, I am Tulu Lokpe Ogunjobi. I will be your guard. Well, the power sector has lost, according to reports, more than 163 billion naira in the first 131 days of this year. A data of the sector's operation is obtained from the adversary power team in the office of the vice president shows that, that the sector lost this much between January the 1st and May the 11th. Report shows that the power sector has continued to record massive losses in its operations owing to various operational constra constraints. On May the 11th alone, the sector lost an estimated 1 billion 551 million naira. That's due to insufficient gas supply, distribution infrastructure, and transmission infrastructure. Well, and the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, says the federal government will invest more than 70 billion naira to improve distribution infrastructure in the 11 electricity distribution companies in Nigeria. Fashola said the investment will be part of the government's 40% shareholdings in the discos. According to him, uh, the Federal Executive Council, while the, while the Federal Executive Council has approved the investment plan or original equipment for manufacturers and um, for also outsized the materials for manufacturers, Fashola said the investment will be part of government's 40% uh, share. Now, um, equipment have also been called upon with proposal. Meanwhile, the minister has charged the 11 discos to invest more in their network to complement the greed expansion efforts of the TCN and the government's 72 billion naira commitment to their networks. Well, I have the executive director of the Association Nigerian Electricity Distribution uh, Distributors. That's a Sunday uh, or Duto. He's here with me in the studio to discuss more about the power sector. Yes, uh, great to have you join us uh, on the Thank show and discussing much. this very Thank important very sector that affects everybody in this country. L l let's start with the issues of infrastructure, yes, in the distribution chain uh, network. Uh, tell us, how far have we really gone? Well, when you're talking about infrastructure, you need to look at the whole value chain as a whole because the each of the layers in value chain are interdependent on one another mm -hmm. so you have to look at both generation transmission and distribution mm -hmm. um i would say that there has been a lot of improvement in the three layers of the value chain in the last five years but we need to look at where we are coming from where we are where are we supposed to be and why are we where we are um, you cannot uh, in any way fix the decay of 60 years in five years, okay? But if we look at 2013, and we started on the 1st of November 2013, and we look at where we are now, there has been a lot of improvement. Even there has been a lot of improvement in supply. There has been a lot of improvement in the effort of the federal government to ensure that there is sufficient power supply. But we are not there yet. We are far, far away from being there. Mm. So we still have a lot to do. But we are hampered by a lot of things. And one of these is energy theft. Mm. Yeah, we, 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 we're supposed to look at that. Yes, that is something that has become very, very rampant now. We've heard distribution companies come out to even name and shame. What is happening with regards to energy theft? Well, I'm aware that in Nigeria, with a population of over 180 million people, um, there are a lot of corruption going on in the system. So the power sector is not immune. And the power uh, consumers are also not immune. So it's a reflection of what is going on in our society. The incident of power theft is very, very alarming. Uh, we noticed, uh, following a research that we conducted in Eko, Ikeja, Kano, and Ibanodisco, that uh, once we install prepaid meters, over 30% of such prepaid meters are bypassed. Mm. That is really shameful because this is something that we need to do. We need to, we need to roll out more meters. There is a need for more meters. Because metering is more in our interest than even in the interest of the customer. It is the interest of the customer to have a meter because he or she can measure what he uses. For us, we can measure what our customers use and we can recover. We do recover more and better when customers are metered than the, when we have incidents of estimated billing. So the um, problem today is that a lot of people steal energy everywhere. You'll be surprised at what happens in high areas, 
like Ikejajiare, people and places where you, you can never Sick. imagine that such thing can happen. Even you, you have some people who have uh, credited their meter with as high as maybe 20,000 or more than that, yet still bypass in this country, in Abuja. So you see quite a lot of things like that happening in the system. I think what we just need to do, all of us, because you see, as long as the sector, sector is not whole, we are all paying for it. When your neighbor steals or bypass his meter and you are on an estimated billing, you are paying for your neighbor. Because once I meter the transformer that is serving your area, I can know what exactly is coming out from that transformer at the end of the month. But unfortunately, the system is not perfect because you should not be paying for your neighbor. But if you see something, say something. I, I, I want to believe that this is why they say there's a need for an energy audit. Check what people really consume. Check installations. I think something needs to be done by the discourse to actualize um, the quantum of energy that residents well, and businesses um, consume. I before just before I entered the studio this morning, I still um, took part in resolving a dispute regarding a customer that lives in Magodo Estate, and the customer who is the lawyer confirmed to me that this morning Ikeja Electric staff came to take to do an energy audit of his house, Great. to take the load, check what he used, and so on and so forth. Great. We are doing it. Uh, we just need our people to be more patient. And I'm appealing. We are not there yet. We are not doing enough as discourse. We are not even efficient enough. But we are doing it. We are making all effort to ensure that this thing happens. It is in our interest and the interest of our customers to ensure that people only pay for what they use. We are not out to swindle anybody. And we are, not, we are not engaging in any politics or coming here to lie. I am an Igberman, and I believe so much in integrity. So for us, when we see something that is wrong within our system, we do a lot of internal cleansing. And we try our best, and we encourage our customers to report any discourse staff that is asking you for money. And you should remember that corruption or bribery and corruption involve two parties at least. There's somebody that offers and somebody that takes, or somebody that requests for it, and somebody that gives it. If mm -hmm. they ask you and you don't give, that is not a crime. That's, that's what we think no, no, we need no, to understand. No, 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 no. More, more, more recently, there have been issues around estimated billing, and even yes. the uh, Green Chambers, that's men of the Green, uh, with the Green Seats, that's the House of Representatives, led by Honorable Bajabi Amina, that's the um, leader in the House, saying that they should criminalize estimated billings. There was a town hall meeting in Lagos. I attended that meeting that had to do with all the southwestern states and people really, really poured out their anger. People were really aggrieved with regards to operations of some discos. Now, what do you make of that proposal to well, about criminalizing? Let me start as we do in NANED by apologizing to Nigerians who have not been well served. Great, I like that. I've, I like I've, that. I've said Great. it. Great. I've said it that Great. we are not there yet. Great. I've said it that we are not efficient Great. enough. All the discos, no exception. Great. Okay, but we do not get involved in the politics of power. We are involved in provision of power. Mm. These are two different concepts, mm. and we are not politicians. Mm. So, because my learned brother, Honorable Bajabi Amila, lived in the U.S. just as I lived for in the UK. And we know that even there, there are estimated billing. Estimated billing comes as a result of lack of metering. Lack of metering in the, in the case of Nigeria, it may interest our viewers to note that when we took over on the 1st of November 2013, we met a metering gap of over 5 million. That is to say, over 5 million households without meters. That is in addition to lack of proper audit. Thank you. In Ogu State, <clears throat> I saw an estate owned by Nepal PSN officials, they call it Nepal Cooperative Estate, where they were not paying bills at all. That was in 2014. We've seen some top PSN staff and their families that were not paying bills at all. That sort of system, we stopped it. And in doing so, we brought them into the, into the dragnet to, to, to count them as part of our customers, which means that the number of customers that we were left with were far, far lower than the actual in the real world. Thus, we have a lot of uh, leakages. And everybody knows that in every street you go, there's always somebody stealing energy somewhere. Any, any 
any energy theft attempt or anything to do with energy theft affect the whole system. And coming to criminalizing it, it is not the way to go. It is wrong. It, is, it may be populist, but it does not really make sense because when your bills are estimated, when you don't have a meter, you have to be estimated. But when you are estimated, you have a right to contest the bill. And the, our regulator is a very, this is a very heavily regulated, regulated industry. And NEC has provided the proper channel and procedure through which you can contest your bill. But the simple thing you need to do is pay the last, the equivalent of the last undisputed bill. If you are giving 5,000 last month, and this month you are giving 8,000, you feel that that 8,000 is too much. 8,000 may be because there are more supply, but you can still contest it. But you have to go and pay 5,000, which is the equivalent of your last undisputed bill. Mm -hmm. Write a letter, take it to the Nari Disco office. That will be resolved. If they don't, you have a right to report to our regulator. We have the NEC forward office everywhere. We deal with a lot of uh, conflict resolution every day in Anand, and we try our best to, to resolve the same. In the last two weeks, we've been on a tour of the, north, uh, the northwest states. I was in Jigawa, Castina, Kano, Cardinal, Zaria. And we saw a lot of things, and we tried to correct so many things. So criminalizing it does not solve the problem. What we should be looking at is how can we make the system work? Mm. The system is not working well enough, no doubt mm. about that. But making it work involves three parties. The government on one side, we the service providers, and our numerous customers. Mm. The three of us need to collaborate and work together for us to ensure that the power sector works very Everybody well. has a role to play. Oh, yes. Now, something in this part of the world that, that worries me too, and I also see it, and I tried not to do it, is even when there is supply, during the day, you see people leaving their lights on, you see um, flood lights or the you know, security lights on, even in the mornings when you're driving to work and you see... So I, I tend to wonder, and I've attended forums where people talk about energy conservation, vis-a-vis -vis the loss which you've experienced in the power sector. Do you think Nigerians are properly managing power? Nigerians are not properly managing power. Nigerians are not uh, doing enough when it comes to energy management. I'll give you an instance. In 2014, I was the Chief Legal Advisor and Company Secretary at Ibado Disco in Ibado. On a Sunday in Abeokuta, my own town, I removed 160 bulbs from the front of different shops. What happened? People opened their shop on Saturday. When they are going home in the night, when they, when they close, they put on the light outside. They call it security light. And that light is left like that until Monday morning when they come back. That is an absolute irresponsible way of managing energy. That is a huge waste. But when you look at those who do that, they have no meters. You see, those are the kind of thing. And that's part of the reason why your bill can go up. Yeah. In your house, if you are in the sitting room, please switch off the light of the room. Once yeah. you're not there, whether yeah. daytime yes. or nighttime. Yes. Once we can manage energy responsibly, your B2 can also go down. It's a major, major issue. Then people need to desist from using those uh, 60 watt, 100 watt, 200 watt bulbs. They are cheaper to buy, they are more expensive to use. Energy saver bulbs are more expensive to buy, but far, savior. far cheaper to use. And this is what we do in Anet from time to time in publications and brokers, encouraging people to manage and preserve energy. This is very important. I've seen that. In Magodo, this morning, people putting on their lights. I went there, knocked the door, and told them, "Can you please help?" Us? But they were looking at me as if I'm yes. a madman. Yes. That what's That's your strange. business? But when my business is this electricity, switch off your light. You shouldn't be putting on light in daylight. I saw that in Mina. Embarrassingly, I saw worst in uh, Yola. How can people put on the light of a whole neighborhood at 11 a.m. in the morning? That tells you that they don't pay. If they pay for it. They will not do that. That's part a, of the problem. A, that we a, have. a lot needs to be done, I think, to re, 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 an attitude now change yes. for Nigerians in regards to this. Now, yes. let's look at back again, almost finally on this segment, investments in the power sector. There are still investments coming in, even from the federal government side, and even the transmission. Lots of um, substations and all of that have been opened. And I hear a clause that the discos need to take this power. What's the role of the discos in all of this? 
Let me first of all commend the federal government for the effort they are making now to improve the transmission grid. The transmission is the major problem, and uh, I, I, we, we keep on giving the correct um, um, statistics or figure. In 2015, Transmission Company of Nigeria, which is 100% owned by the federal government, carried out a stress test to determine the capacity of generation, transmission, and distribution. I won't talk about generation and transmission. I'll talk about my own. Okay. The result of that test showed that the discos are capable of taking 6,288 megawatts of electricity. 6,288. Okay. That was a test carried out by an agency of the federal government. So not us, okay? And today, in actual fact, as, as at, I'm not talking about stranded power. The actual power that goes into the system is still hovering between four and 5,000 megawatts, what? which means the discos at 6,288 can take load. Mm. But there are some areas. If you take my load to my backyard, I have a right to say I want it in the front of the house, more so that your role is that of a trailer that is just driving, getting the thing to me as a transporter. Me as the distributor, who is going to pay the, the, the producer, have a right to say I want it in Shomolu, uh, but you guys, not yet time, that will be in the evening. But if you go and dump it where I don't want it, I'll reject it, that's one. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, there are a lot of constraints, but I am commending the federal government because for the past eight years, Ikeja West, Lagos West, supply light to Abelkuta, to Ugunte, through Abelkuta, along the corridor of Ewekoro. There have been a lot of breaker issues there for eight years, before privatization. Similarly, we have a lot of underconductor issue from Ibadan to Shagamu. That's from uh, Ayede in Ibadan, along the express into Shagamu transmission station. All those things that are constrained that are making it difficult for transmission companies to push light to where we need it. But I can confirm to you that the current government are working very hard in that line because they are doing a lot of upgrades. Even in Abeguta, an upgrade is going on at the transmission station in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Likewise, all over the country. So the current minister and the current federal government, they are doing their best. And I'm sure Nigeria just needs to be more patient with us. As time goes on, we will have power. We have, but yes, we yes. are far from me because we are only talking about 5,000 to a population of 180 million. Why South Africa with about 67 million people already have 46,000 megawatts? So we are, we are far, far away from... Now, 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 we're going to round up this, this, this part of, uh, of the discussion in two for Now, the saying, like the saying goes, uh, there should be light at the end of the tunnel. We expect light at the end of the tunnel. When do we really get light at the end of the tunnel? And tell us this issue of uh, uh, unit power, what we consume, how much it is sold, what you sell, and what is sold. Let Nigerians understand okay. it as we round up. First of all, this goes need to be efficient. But efficiency can only be brought about when the system is liquid. And we are hampered by liquidity. And that lack of liquidity is as a result, is occasioned by lack of appropriate pricing of the product. Mm -hmm. And I've said it before on this program. As at this point, we are buying electricity at 18, and as an average of R2, 18 naira 88 cover per kilo hour. We are only allowed to sell the same at the rate of 31 naira 76 cover. If I'm buying at 18 naira and I'm selling at 70, uh, 31 cobble, and nobody is subsidizing That's between 31 and 80, and you expect meter, transformer, magic, everything, hunky dory, it won't happen. You cannot tie my leg and expect me to run. You cannot close my mouth and you begin, you continue to ask me to sing hallelujah. Hallelujah can only be sung by anybody <laughs> if your mouth can be open. That is a song. <laughs> that is what is going on. Our mouth have been closed, locked, and padlocked. My <laughs> legs are tight <laughs> by the lack of liquidity, and it has reduced my ability to sing hallelujah with my mouth and to run with my leg. That is the truth. Oh, my God. Executive Director, Association of Nigerian Electricity Distributors. It's always nice having you on the show. Thank, Thank you very much again for sharing your thoughts Thank with you us today. Much. With that is a wrap on Business Nigeria for today. Thank you very much for watching. On behalf of the entire production crew, bye for now. I'm Tolu Lokwe Ogujabi.